Hello there everyone, welcome to Shay Tinson's household. We've covered the front cover, we're now going on to the insides, okay? So I'm just going to do quick tutorials on some of the insides on this first part of the album. So the first one is this side pocket here, okay? So I've already prepped, so I'm all prepared for you. So this is the strip of paper that I'm going to use. Now the size that I cut it was the same height as this background piece of card and I've used the background paper again. So it kind of merges a little bit in. So it's a little bit sort of hidden in a sense. And I've also cut it to be two and three quarter inches wide. Again, it will depend on your own journal size as to what width you will cut it. Now I'm actually going to use my Martha Stewart punch, my much beloved Martha Stewart punch, and I'm going to insert the centre part into the punch. Now the way in which I'm going to do it is I'm going to eyeball this space here and this space here, let's see if I can show you up close to see how much it overhangs the edge to, so that I can see that it's roughly, can you see how I've got that much there and I've got the same amount on this side. So they're overhanging the edges equally. So then I know that it's, it's central. Okay, the other way of doing it, of course, is to draw a line from this center pattern down, even draw a line then on your piece of paper, okay. First bit done, and then I'm going to shift it along so that that punched out bit now matches up with the pattern that's underneath it, and punch again. And then I'm going to do the same this side. Line the pattern up with the printed, make sure that the card's pushed in so that it's up against this lip here. And there we go. And then I'm left with all these bits because I don't have a tray on the bottom of mine. Let's get rid of those. Okay. And then I'm going to ink up the edges. Again, pay attention to those corners, so they've got that rounded look. And then, I'm actually going to do this, do all this bit of acetate here. I am actually going to do me, me squirrely whirly bit. Because I want to cover over those holes so that it creates almost like a shadow. Now, you can tart and titivate your journal, because we've now at that point at tarting and titivating. You can tart and titivate to your heart's content now, and you can do whatever you want. I'm just going to show you what I did, so that if you need a bit of inspiration, then this is the one for you. Ooh. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to place glue on three of the sides, but not the punched edge side. Obviously, because otherwise I'm closing it apart. Bob that on so that it lines up with everything. And there we go. One pocket. That was me posh, me posh voice there. Pocket. You're right. I'm not posh at all. Don't know who I'm kidding. And if I show you the original, so that's the original version. So as you can see, I've done the punching, I've done the inking, and then I've added some trim on, and then I've got this vintage button, which I cut the shank off the back. I've then added some tags into that pocket, and I've added some folded up paper. Ooh, come on out. I've added some folded up paper for journaling on, folded up into an envelope style. Okay, so bottom edge up two corners down, flip that under the circle, 
Bob's your uncle. And the tags, I just cut out the tag shape from my kit and I um, squared off the top so it's not pointed. I squared it off at the top and just attached it to some black card and attached some paper on the back as well. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Right, now this next page I'm actually going to leave because I want to think about something different for this one. But on this one, what I did was I cut out this shape from a spare piece that I'd got and I stuck it on around three sides so that it now forms a pocket. So then I can tuck some pieces of paper in there and they're kind of hidden away so that sort of again it's a little bit of a secret pocket and then I attached two leaves and a flower and these I got from Hobbycraft attached some trim across the bottom and some lace and I just glued those on all right straightforward in the pocket itself I used uh, an oh, this is that teal blue envelope I was on about that I was originally thinking instead of using the black I would use the teal blue Pretty, isn't it? Pretty colour. Um, so what I did was I embossed this bottom edge here with one of my embossing folders, cut out a strip from one of the um, ephemera pages, punched out a circle scallop, stuck on a stamp on top of some cheesecloth, and just um, using one of my stamps that I've got, just printed, I don't know whether you'll see that, I printed like a postage mark on there stuck a little circle on the back so that that now acts as the point for pivoting the tip of the envelope flap under and put some paper inside now as i say you don't have to do exactly what i've done these are just ideas okay so i'm now going to go on to this one here now here i've already cut out the same page as I've got actually stuck onto my envelope okay and I've made sure that it is exactly the same size so that because I want to utilize this space here I need to make sure it's in exactly the same spot so I've trimmed it up so that it should now all cross-fingered match up and then what I did was I cut up the center here to the edge of the frame cut along the edge of the frame here cut down the center here to the edge of the frame again and then I cut that bit off there to the edge of the frame and I cut round the top of this shape and again I'm just cutting slowly so then I've got this so I'm going to stick this on as a pocket in that I'm going to glue it around three sides but this then hovers over the top of this one so it now looks an exact replica of what's already there now when I've done this previously I called this my ghost pocket um, and I'll also keep bits like this as well because they're handy for doing things like using little circle punches and then you can punch out little images that then come in handy. As you've seen, I use my little circles for putting down my envelope flaps and things like that. So I'm just going to ink up that last bit here. And then of course you can stick a photograph on here as well. just using my glue and again you can see I've got images on the back because I didn't want to waste my card so I'm just going to put glue on there around the three sides well that's as straight as a donkey's hind leg Carol it's it funny how like you get used to having stuff so close to you but when you're doing videos you've got to have stuff further away because you've got to be in in camera shot for you guys Okay, I'm going to stick that on there, make sure that's all lined up, make sure the pattern here is lined up as well. 
Now I actually cut this too short, look. Can you see where I cut it too short up here? So I will actually go back and I will ink that in a bit later on so that it sort of merges a little bit better. I might even put some trim up there and some trim down the bottom and that will, that will hide that fact. Okay, now on this side, no, stop Carol, go back this side still. So here I put some lace on first and then I put some trim on top. As you can see I added a photo and then I did some cabinet cards which is a, a digital kit that I'm hopefully going to have live on my Etsy store next week. And all I did was I cut these out and I rounded the corners of them and I stuck them onto the back of a piece of black card. So it means now that I could put a photograph on there which then this then looks as though it's an original um, cabinet card because these always had these on the back of the photographs um, as an advertisement for the photographer. So I did two of those and those slot underneath this new pocket that we've just added and then inside the envelope itself pocket I did a large cabinet card and again did the same thing, cut it out rounded the corners, inked it all up and just stuck it onto the piece of a black card but made sure that I leave a little bit of an edge so that it just helps to frame it a little and that's what sits in there. Now on this side all I did was a belly band all right, and then I added all these extra bits inside. So for the belly band Whenever you buy a digital kit, don't look at it and just see for what it is, all right? There are other ways of using all these bits. So it's like, if I can pick it up. So it's even like scrappy bits like that. There are things that you can do even with scrappy bits. So don't always just dismiss the things that you think, actually, I'm never gonna use that because you can use them for things like this. So I'm going to make the belly band by trimming out the patterned part. Oh, helps if I have it the right way around, doesn't it? Oh dear. I'd be dangerous if I used my brain. Okay, so I'm just going to line it up on the printed line. Chop off that excess. Cut it along that line there. Line my wire up with that side of the line. And chop. Sorry, you probably won't see that, will you? No, you might just. And I'm just going to chop that bit off. Okay, so I've now got the basis of a belly band. But what I need to do is I need to measure the length of it. I'm trying to bring all that back. So if I just look at the length, I can already see that it's too long. Okay. I also want to stick this onto some black card. And so I actually need it shorter than the actual page itself. So if I bring that down to there so that I've got this gap here at the top. I want the same kind of the gap at the bottom. Now, because I'm me, I tend to just dink it with me now, but you can use a pencil. <laughs> you can measure it. And then again, I'm gonna be naughty. I'm just gonna cut it off with my scissors. I'm not gonna put it in the trimmer. I've done that too long, that's better. All right, I'm gonna ink up my edges so that when I stick it onto the black card, it merges in. So there's nothing, there's nothing majorly like difficult about this. And I think the things where people get frightened of is just playing. I think we get frightened of playing. Now this is a piece of scrap. 
if you remember when I covered the front cover boards this was the bit of card that was left over again I've not thrown it away because look my belly band fits on there so these bits all, all these bigger bits come in handy now I do have to say you do get to a point where you're a bit like this is ridiculous me saving all these bits and especially if I'm not going to use them so you do have to pick and choose which bits you're going to save and make sure that you do eventually get round to using them because otherwise they just sit in a box like mine are and me doing nothing with them so when you're doing a project like this all the bits that you cut off and are left with they're ideal to use them up at that precise moment in time you know when you're working on that particular project and then see what you've got left and decide whether you want to keep or whether you want to throw away. Got a bit of fluffy paper there. Okay, now normally I would leave that to dry a little. Got a bit of fluff. And I'm just going to eyeball it from this side. I can see it, you might not be able to. And I can see what's left from my wire to the edge of the decorative paper. And I can see that that's roughly the same width of black as I've got here. Maybe a tad too much. Let me just, yeah, that's better. Okay, we're going in, we're cutting. Okay, now a strip like that, I will probably end up keeping. Keeping, that was very brummy, wasn't it? I'll keep that bit. And then I'm just going to eyeball again from this side. Make sure I'm happy that it's the same as the other end. There we go. And this time I'm just going to place glue at the top and at the bottom. <gasps> oh, I've got hiccups now. <laughs> I have just been and <laughs> had something to eat. <laughs> Please give me hiccups. Might have to hold my breath in a minute. To... <laughs> Don't do any more, Carol. Don't do any more. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to sit that on there. And I don't want my belly band too wide. I want it wide enough that it gives me a nice decorative feel about it. Oh, don't move. I didn't say you could move. But I need to make sure I've got some space here and that I've got some space here to the edge of the pocket. All right, so that whatever I put under there, it will be able to fit in nicely. Now, on the previous one, I did the... Um, the... 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 There in the end I did a vellum envelope now the next video I'm going to show you how to print onto tracing paper and to vellum to make sure that the patterns in the right place and all of that all that sort of stuff okay but I'm not going to do it today and then I attached two buttons that again I cut the the shank bit off at the bottom and stuck those on now when I'm sticking the likes of buttons on I tend to use my glossy accents and glossy accents takes quite a while to dry one of the tips that I found with using it is if you put the glue on the surface of what it is that you're wanting to adhere set it to one side just leave it even if it's for a minute you can leave it and then plonk it on because again when I mentioned the tacky glue sometimes if you let it just set off a little bit form that little bit of a skin it actually becomes more tacky so when you then glue your buttons on or metal or whatever it is that you do leave it and put that to one side because it takes quite a while for it to to dry now that kind of decorating is what I do when just before I go to bed so I can leave it overnight because because I'm a beggar for things like, right, I've put the buttons on there, I'm going to go to bed, and then I go, oh, actually, hang on, if I just do that before I go to bed, and then I turn the page and I forget, and the buttons come off. So be strict with yourselves, unlike me, and put the buttons on at the end of the night just before you go to bed, or your metal embellishments, whatever it is. So, again, referring to the original, 
So you can see here I've got the buttons, I've got the envelope which I'm going to tell you about tomorrow and then I've got these little packet pockets. Okay, they're the same colour as the colours of the, the papers and stuff so that's why I've used those and again those are going to be a new digital kit. All I've done there is I've attached some buttons on, um, so no, sorry, start again. I cut some seam binding, I stuck the seam binding on and then I stuck the buttons on top of that. So you see it's the blue, the same as the packet pockets. Okay, now with this one, you know how with if you buy a pack of envelopes and cards, you sometimes get the cards in the pack. Well, you can utilize that, utilize those cards to decorate up, or you can just get a piece of card, fold it in half, and then decorate it as well. And that's exactly what I've done here. I got a piece of card, I folded it up, I'm, I made sure that lengthwise and width depth wise it would fit inside of that envelope and trimmed it down accordingly and then I cut out the image and stuck it on the front again making sure that I left that little bit of a border all the way around but when I then open it up I've then got a place for adding photographs now I could put photo corners on here but I'm not going to because it would depend on the size of the photograph that I'm going to put in. So I could put a really big photograph in or I could put a narrow photograph in and then write about it down here. And when I come to writing on the card I could either use a white pen, a silver pen or a gold pen to write on the black. That always looks really lovely. Um, or you can write on a piece of paper and then stick the piece of paper on next to the photograph. Okay, so that's that one. Are we doing on time, Kaz? How are we doing? <gasps> Ooh, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. Okay. If if I run out of time, I'm wondering what was happening then. I'm picking the two up together. Ooh, what's happening? Um, if I run out of time, I'll finish talking about these two on the next video, but we'll see how we go. So on this next one, what I did was I cut out one of the images from the kit, that way around. Again, this was a spare bit of card from something that I cut out earlier. And I placed that on there, but I only stuck it on the back side of this paper at the top. So that when you flip it up, you've got somewhere to pop, probably put another photograph or to write about the photograph that you might have in here. Alright, I'll show you. Here's one I did earlier. So that's the one that I did in the original, so that that just flips up. Okay, I also did the inverted corners on the printed piece so it looks like it's one of those old-fashioned photographs that you've got slotted underneath the photo mounts so it gives that same effect now what I did on the original was bring it back in I did two corners here so basically I had a square which I then cut in half diagonally now what I'm actually going to do, and I've, lo I've lost it. There we go. It's there. In the kit, you've got these really big pages. And unless you're going to put those in a picture frame, they're a little bit useless. Um, unless you're doing a really, really big journal, that is. But what I thought was that I could utilise this here and this here. So I'm actually going to cut out a square. Let me get my pencil and I can show you. So I can print another one off. So I'm actually going to cut out a square like so. Okay, so I'm going to cut out a square like that and then I'm going to cut it diagonally across. Now I might position my square a little bit differently so that I've got more of the flowers in because I probably do my diagonal there yeah so my square Ooh. yeah I'd have to have a play about with that 
here because that needs to be and then I'm chopping off that top flower anyway I can have a play but I could do the same with this one as well you see is I can cut it off diagonally here and then I've got a corner there that I can use now, admittedly, on the original, I only did small ones, so I would need to just have a little think about which bits I want actually to use. So I would actually cut those up and then stick them onto here, so then I can then stick that under that corner and this one under that corner, and then that holds that in place. I'm going to leave it there for now, and I'm going to come back and finish this off tomorrow. Not tomorrow the next video <laughs> okay guys have a play have fun hope that's given you a little bit of inspiration and i'll speak to you on the next one bye for now